If you are the face of your brand, having a header section with a hero image is a good idea to instantly connect with your visitors. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set this up with Thrive Architect. Hi, I'm Hanne from Thrive Teams. And I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Those really nice looking header sections with big images that all the pros are using on their website. And probably you want to have the same on your homepage. And that's exactly what I will show you. So this is what we are gonna build. This kind of layout with the big image and then text on the side. Now the most difficult thing with this layout is that it often looks good on desktop, but not so good on smaller screens and we are gonna fix that too. Let me show you how this one looks on mobile. So I can use the inspect function to simulate what this page looks on mobile and as you can see this is on an iPhone 6 and so we actually replaced the header image with this nice looking um, circle image and I will show you how to do that too. So let's get started. Add a new page and launch Drive Architect. From here, rather than starting to build our homepage on this empty page, I want to start from a blank canvas. So I'm gonna start from a blank landing page. Go to change template. Here you have a whole bunch of templates. Let's go to our blank template and the blank page. Now the first element we need is a background section. Let's drag it on the page. Now, as you can see here in the main options of the background section, it will inherit the width from the landing page. Now, if you want to know what that width is, you can go to your landing page. So use the breadcrumbs. And then you can see that for this template, the layout covers the entire screen width. So that's exactly what we want. Now, what we want in this background section is this nice picture background. But first of all, we want to load a solid color on this background because there will be text on this background and a solid color will always load faster than an image. So having a solid dark color first makes that the text will be readable even if the image loads a little bit slower. So let's go into our background style and first use this solid color. Now we have this nice dark blue color and I'll save it as um, one of my favorite colors because I will still need this later on. Now let's load our image. As you can see, this image is really large in size, 2622 pixels, but it is fairly small in weight because it's only 100 kilobits. This is really important for the loading speed of this image. You wanna make sure that you have an image that covers the entire screen. So I suggest having an image that's at least 1,190 pixels, but you also want it to load really fast. So using an image optimization tool such as Kraken.io is a really good idea in order to have this nice big image, but with a really small weight size. Make sure your image is on full size here so that it won't become blurry and then insert it in the post. Now let's apply this. As you can see at the moment, we can't see a lot of our background section and of our image. So let's go to our main options. And because we want this image to be very prominent on the page, you can switch this to viewport height and let's set this to 75. So this means that the background section will always take up 75% of the viewport on um, the screen. Now we want to add our text to our background section. So for that, we can enter a text element, drag it on our page. And here we can select that this is a heading one. Now, I could also just have used this one because this is a heading one that was already on the page. For now, I'm gonna simply delete this heading here. Because we want all the text on this background section to be white, I can go into my background section and then in typography and here I will select white. So FFF is the code for white. If you're unsure about these color codes, uh, then you can also just drag it. And the upper left corner is where, we, where you will find the white color. Now apply this. This means that every text we drop in here will immediately be the white color. 
Now, in order to get the effect that we want, we want our text to be aligned on the right side of this image. There are different ways to do this, but there's actually only one way that will make it super easy to do and that will make it look good on every screen size. One of the things that you could do is click on this text element and then go into layout and positioning and here add uh, padding, for example. Now this might look good on desktop. I can make sure that the text is exactly where I want it. But the moment that you switch to tablet, you can see that this really does not look good anymore. So our text element is pushed completely because what happened is that we tell Thrive Architect that we always want 641 pixels to stay before the text. And then if you go to mobile, this just becomes catastrophic because it seems like our text isn't even there anymore. So this is clearly not the right way to do this. Let's put this back. Now, because we want to right align several elements on this background image, the easiest way to do this is to add a content box so that we then can group our title, our paragraph and our button all in one content box and decide on where to put that content box on our background section. So let's add a content box. And now we can make this content box 40% wide and align it on the right of our background section. This means that everything that we put in this box will automatically be on this side of the image. So let's drag our title in there. And then we're also going to make a paragraph. So another, I'll need another text element. Let's put it under here and make sure that it is inside our content box. So you can see here in the breadcrumbs that we have a landing page, the background section, the content box, and then the text is inside our content box. And that's exactly what we want. And last but not least, we want to add a button in this content box too. Now our content is almost aligned the way we want it, but we can still align it in the center of the image. So the vertical positioning, we can also center align it. Now this gives a really nice outline for everything on this background image. But as you can see with background images, it will often become a problem to make the text really readable. That's why on this background section, we want to do something else. So in our background style, we want to add another overlay on the image. And in this case, let's add a gradient overlay. And you'll soon see why. So with this gradient, we want to make sure that we can see half of the image without any overlay and then half of the image with the darker overlay where the text is. So first of all, let's put this to uh, transparent here. So now we already go from transparent to black. We want to make sure that we go to our nice uh, dark blue. And now you can see that the gradient goes from transparent to dark blue. But again, that's not exactly what we want. What we want is to have the left side of the image be completely transparent and then only the right side have this cover. So let's add an extra marker in here simply by clicking on it. Let's make sure that this is set to 90 degrees. And now let's make this 50% also completely transparent. And then let's add another marker in here. And on this marker, we want to use our dark blue, but fairly transparent. So you can play around here to see what looks good with your image and with your text. This is a pretty nice effect. So let's apply this. So now, as you can see, we have our solid color, then we have our image overlay, and then we have the linear gradient to make sure that the text really pops and stands out. Now let's make some cosmetic changes before we go on to look at our tablet and at our mobile view. First of all, I want to change the typography of this title. So in our main options, let's go to fonts, Google fonts, and I want to use dancing script. And then for our paragraph, we want to use railway. 
Now, if you know that you want to have all your text on your page be railway or all your titles be uh, in this dancing script, you can simply go in here, set it the way you like it. So for example, railway, and then um, maybe put this at 20 uh, pixels. And then you can go to paragraph and update the paragraph to match. This means that now on the landing page, each time that you drop a paragraph on the landing page, it will have the exact styling you chose here. Now for our button, we want something that's called a ghost button. So we can go into our options and here choose ghosts. And then rather than having this green, we want um, to have a nice Bordeaux here. Now the typography of the button, we want it to be white. So the text on the button and then the, um, the border, we also want that to be white at this point. So now, as you can see, we have this Bordeaux color that we picked just on hover and we have a nice ghost button right here. If you want to change something on this hover effect, simply go into your state and then choose hover. And this is where you'll be able to see what's, um, what effect is on there. Now go back to the normal state to continue with this page. Double click to change our text. Now that we have our desktop set up the way we want it, it's time to have a look at our tablet and our mobile view. So first let's go to tablet. Now this actually still looks pretty good on tablet. I would probably go in and make this content box a bit wider. So in layout and positioning, instead of making it 40%, I would probably make it more like 60. And then we can also go into our backgrounds, background style, and this linear gradient, I would probably drag this one a little and then this one too, to make sure that the text is really readable, but this is not too bad. And then we can also move the image and maybe like half her face like this, let's apply. This, this looks pretty, pretty good. And then let's go to our mobile view. Now here, this really doesn't work anymore to have the content box on, on half the screen. And even this background image doesn't really work anymore. So on mobile, let's delete our background image. Let's also delete this gradient, just keep our solid color. And then for our content box, let's make this one a hundred percent and align all the text in the center. Now, the one problem with this is that it does look good, but it completely misses this personal branding element, which we had on desktop and which, which looked really good. So that's why we want to bring back this, this branding element. And that's exactly what I showed you in the beginning of the video with this round image. So let's do that now. For this, we have to go back to our desktop view because to add elements on the page, you always have to be in desktop. So let's go back on desktop and add an image. We want to add this under our title. Now I prepared this square image from the same image as the big background image. So insert it in the post. Now let's make this a little smaller. Give it a border. So a three pixel wide border. And let's also make this round corners so that we have this nice round image. Now we don't want this image to show on desktop and on tablet because that would look a bit weird, right? So when we go into a responsive tab, we can say that we don't want this to be visible on desktop. We don't want this to be visible on tablet. And so it will only be visible on mobile. Let's check this out. So on mobile, we have to do some more uh, positioning. So let's go in our layout and positioning, make this center aligned and then play around with the margin a little bit to make this look good. And this is pretty nice, right? So we have our big in image on desktop. 
we have our tablet view, and then we have this really nice mobile specific layout. Now we can preview this, and if we go back to our inspect, we can actually select here responsive, and, and here we can set different widths. So if we start with like 1200, we can see that this is still looking good. Let's go to a thousand. And we start to be in the tablet mode, 900, and same here, let's go to 700, and you can see that we switch to the mobile view. So this is how you can make sure that your header image looks really nice on every screen size. I hope you liked this tutorial, and if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below.